Hello and welcome to the Political Opinions Podcast, where every opinion is given equal footing and political tolerance and debate are given their proper attention in a world where both are on the decline. Today's episode will cover different opinions on abolishing private schools. The United Kingdom education system is renowned globally for the high numbers and high reputations of its private boarding schools, with names such as Eton and Harrow being very recognisable, even to people who didn't attend private school. There are many who believe these schools are good for the United Kingdom, with the higher standard of education they provide being of particular attraction. As always, however, there are those who disagree and believe that private schools should be abolished. Today, we will unpick and compare these opinions. The first idea to consider for private schools is their history. For those supporting the abolition of private schools, there is a belief that these schools represent an outdated and long gone past in which the elite stayed at the top and left everyone else behind. For reasons we will come into, therefore, there is a belief that private schools serve as one of the few remaining reminders of a past that is long gone. The first reason for this is that private schools are fundamentally unfair. Private schools provide children with smaller class sizes, more resources, and generally better education that even the best grammar schools cannot match. This provides children born into wealthy homes with an advantage that puts them ahead of state school students for something they did not earn. It is the opposite of meritocracy. Now a counter to this might be that, for example, private schools are good for the economy. Well, in response to this, those supporting the abolition of private schools would argue primarily that economical arguments over private schools miss the point. It comes down to education and equality, not economics. Furthermore, with the abolition of private schools, the many resources that they have can be redistributed more fairly in ways that benefits all of society, not just those who can afford it. This then leads on to the question should education be the same for everyone? For those opposing private schools, the answer is yes. There is a belief that just because you can afford better education, that doesn't mean that it should exist. The focus is on those who cannot afford a good education. And there is this idea that education should be the same for everyone, regardless of money. This equal education idea is also important because it extends to the future. Children from private schools have a statistically much higher chance of becoming top judges, civil servants, newspaper editors, and so on. Abolishing private schools would therefore make society more equal in the future by giving everyone the same starting point. And this had the added benefit of improving social mobility by eliminating a system designed to allegedly protect those already at the top. This all comes down then to what is the best solution. Well, for these people, the best solution is to abolish private schools in their entirety. The schools and resources would be distributed more fairly and would allow for more equal society based off individual performance, not based off where you were born. While those who support the abolition of private schools argue that they are outdated, there are those who disagree. Some would suggest that private schools provide a link to a few hundred years of history which we would lose if we abolished them. This comes from a belief that private schools are good and should not be abolished, and as such, the heritage of them is important. The first reason for this is that some believe private schools provide a benefit to state schools by actually keeping class sizes down. State schools already have much higher classroom sizes than private schools do. And as such, if we introduce all of these private school students into state schools, then some claim this problem will only get worse. Furthermore, if private schools were abolished, the postcode lottery would only worsen. This occurs when people will live in an area purely to get access to the best local state education. If all these former private school kids move to state schools, then parents may buy houses in areas with better education, thus raising the house price and forcing out poor parents, and creating a de facto private school where wealth is still a means to entry. 
Then if we look at economics, some will argue that private schools have economic benefits that cannot be ignored. These schools employ tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of people in the UK and bring billions into the economy every year. By abolishing them, therefore, we remove a portion of the economy while greatly increasing the financial burden placed on an already underfunded school system. This is then furthered by the added benefit of bringing foreign money into the UK through the high number of borders. These people who have educated here may move here and bring more benefits over time, and therefore if we abolished private schools, we would lose all of these benefits. These benefits also come from belief that if you can pay for something better, you should be able to have it. If I make more money, some argue I therefore have the right to send my kids to a better school. The issue therefore is not with equal education for all, but for those who don't want to work to give the best for their children. All of this then builds in to future benefits for the UK. With a better educated and prepared group of children coming from private schools, the leaders of tomorrow will be better than if we say abolished private schools. There is a belief that those who should lead should not be based off demographics or being fair. The best should lead. It doesn't matter if it's unfair to society as a whole when we benefit from better leadership and better individuals with private schools. This therefore all stems into a belief that there are better solutions than abolishing private schools. For example, why not try to reform state schools and provide them with more funding? Instead of removing the best schools because they are better, we should instead improve the worst ones and push them up to the same level of education. On the comparison then, firstly on the question of history. Those supporting the abolition of private schools believe that we shouldn't focus on the history of these schools. They are based from an outdated system and are reminders of a past that doesn't exist and society has moved on. However, those disagreeing would say that these schools are a living reminder of the past. They are a part of our history and therefore cannot be ignored and removed. On the impact on state schools, those supporting the abolition would say that this is beneficial. If we have private schools, it leads to state school students starting life on the back foot, which is unfair. But if we remove private schools, everyone starts at the same level. However, those again disagreeing would say that private schools can be beneficial to state schools. They keep class sizes down even further than they would be and prevent postcode lotteries from squeezing out poor students in the best local state educated areas. Then on the impact to the economy, those supporting abolition would say that private schools should not be protected for the money they bring. This misses the fundamental point that they are unfair and that by abolishing them, we can redistribute their resources in a much more fair and equal way. However, those disagreeing would point to these benefits and say they cannot be ignored. Private schools generate billions of pounds for the economy each year and bring in foreign students and money. And these are benefits you cannot simply ignore for any reason. Then on this question of the right to education, those opposing private schools argue that education should be equal for everyone and should not be bought. If you have more money, you can help your kids in other ways and not pay for an unfairly better education. However, those disagreeing would say that if I can afford better education, I have the right to pay for it. And besides, these parents would instead, for example, spend their money on, say, a tutor to get into a grammar school, for example. Then on the impact on the future, those supporting the abolition of private schools argue that we remove a cycle which perpetuates inequality for poorer students. With private schools, rich kids get a head start in life. However, by removing these schools, everyone starts at the same level. However, those disagreeing would say that state schools do not provide as high a standard of education and as such, by abolishing private schools, we have a worse standard of person moving into the future. And they would say that society needs the best leaders, not ones who fit a quota. 
and all of this links into the best solution. For those supporting the abolition of private schools, surprisingly enough, they would say the best solution is to abolish private schools, integrate them into state schools and use their resources more fairly. However, those disagreeing would say that instead of removing the best schools because they are unfair, we should improve the worst schools. For example, well, not for example, just improving state schools. Overall then, those who support the abolition of private schools do so because they are fundamentally unfair and serve to maintain the current social hierarchy. Those who oppose abolition, however, believe that private schools are good for the economy and the country, and believe that there are better solutions than removing the best schools simply because they are behind a paywall. Ultimately though, what do you think? Do you think that private schools do more harm than good, or do more good than harm, and do you support or oppose their abolition, and what is the best solution to you? Also, is there anything that I missed, got wrong, or could do better? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter. Quick reminder, as always, the aim of this episode has not been to try and argue for or against one side of the debate, but rather to highlight the different opinions on the topic and provide a comparison between them. Be sure to check back on Monday for another episode. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you all soon.